for starting off. Um, thank you very much for being present at this webinar. Um, it is organized by FANSA, with whom you're all very well aware. And it will discuss a program project that is called Watershed. And there will be um, two presenters, it will be myself and Ranjan Bai from Bangladesh, who you will be hearing a little bit later. So just some practicalities. You're all um, within uh, online. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask everybody to mute their microphones to avoid that there's a lot of confusion. And I'd be very interested if in the chat you could write where you are from, from which organization, to see the participants that we have got on at the moment. So please, in the chat on the side, put your name and your organization, and we will see a scope of people that are working within the FANSA area. Thank you very much. We have got Pakistan on, online. I know we've got some colleagues from Bangladesh as well. And please use the chat throughout the whole webinar to um, to be able to ask questions or chat with your colleagues. We will be coming back to those questions later, and uh, that will allow us to have some discussion as well. So, without further ado, I will start with the presentation. The presentation part will be about 40 minutes, and after that we will have about 20 minutes for discussion and um, questions and answers. Feel free to keep your video on if you want, but you can also uh, switch it off, no problem. We've got Water for People, we've got LEAD in India, we've got Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for being present. Okay. This presentation has got five components. I'll first be talking about Watershed as a whole program, and then I'll be going around IWM and WASH. This is the component, and that's one of the key elements of Watershed. And we will have a presentation from Ranjan and his colleagues on the situation in Bangladesh and a very sh and a short one uh, on India. And after that will be the section on questions and answers. So, as mentioned, there are two people who will be presenting. Ranjan is working um, within Water Aid Bangladesh, which is one of the partners that this uh, initiative is working with. And I'm working with IOC Push based in the Netherlands. Um, but working globally. Now, Watershed is a five-year program and it's got a number of partners at the global level based in the Netherlands, um, which are ACFO, Wetlands International, Simavi, the actual ministry that is um, uh, funding it, and ISC WASH, which is the organization that I'm working just one second. Yeah, I just have to admit. One moment. We are working a little bit on the fly because some of the software is new. Um, so thank you very much for having patience for that. Okay. Sneha is back online. Uh, Sneha, do you want to say some words before I continue further with the details of Watershed? Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear Raja? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Please go ahead. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for taking your time and joining. Uh, good afternoon and good evening and then uh, maybe good morning for some people across the world. Uh, this webinar series that FANSA is going to organize uh, along with IRC, uh, uh, as part of the IRC Watersheds program. Uh, just to give you a brief introduction, uh, you all know, since you are all FANSA members, you know what FANSA is, it is. But for the benefit of others who do not know, I would just like to say a few words about FANSA. Uh, FANSA is the Freshwater Action Network South Asia. Uh, we are working in uh, eight countries with six national chapters and two focal points, and we have about 400 plus organizations as a network. And uh, 
we work uh, with our partners on uh, uh, lobbying and advocacy focusing on the issues related to leave no one behind and uh, irc is a knowledge management uh, uh, organization it's a non-profit international ngo and uh, it also works on system strengthening in wash related issues and uh, irc also irc is based out of the netherlands and uh, uh, it partners with various uh, organizations uh, starting from district level to the global level and again focusing on uh, implementing the programs doing a lot of research and advocacy and consulting and then uh, irc is part of the many networks and then it influences the change at the global level with this brief introduction i would like to just tell uh, about today's webinar it's going to be the link between wash and uh, integrated water resources and uh, basically this webinar as part of this webinar we are going to present the uh, the uh, results from the ongoing uh, watershed program that irc is implementing where fansa is also uh, the webinar series will have uh, the introduction about the watershed program followed by um, the findings from Bangladesh with Ranjan explaining it. And um, Aryan will also present about the India findings. Uh, so this is going to be a brief thing. And then we'll have some question and answers after each of these presentations. And uh, we'll wrap up the webinar with, uh, with, with a questionnaire or, or a feedback format. So that's it. that is from my side. Aryan, I'm handing it over to you. Thank you very much, Sneha, and thank you all for your patience for it, for getting everything organized. Like said, um, we are working in partnership with many different organizations, and you can see all the different organizations at global level. And within the FUNSA network, there are many partners as well. Now, one of the reasons or initiatives for um, Watershed to get started is because we recognize there are three global problems, actually. One is that sustainable wash services cannot be achieved without sustainable water resources and vice versa. Basically, the, the water quality and water quantity is at risk. The other thing is that we can't achieve universal access or the SDGs um, with, uh, without engaging meaningful without, with the government. So it's a governance challenge. And the third one is we need a strong civil society for improving this governance. Those are the three pillars upon which this initiative is based. And you'll see that coming back in a number of components. Within this whole challenge, we're working on four different areas. The first is WASH and IWM integration, which I'll come to quite a bit. And I just want to highlight the other ones as well, which will be discussed in follow-up webinars. One is accountability and financing, which is all about making sure that um, the investments that the government is able to make are visible, accountable, but also um, participatively um, determined. And there is a global review happening at a uh, global level, as well as in-country at district level um, and at national level. Then we've also mentioned reaching everyone everywhere. The components of social inclusion is also at the core. Um, based on the right-based approach that everybody is entitled to safe and equitable um, water and sanitation, um, and therefore ways of including um, all the different members of society. And the last basis is that it's about data-driven decision-making. Um, without data, um, any, any, any uh, opinion is just <laughs> an opinion. And we've been working a lot to make sure that there's evidence at what we are trying to say and the reasons why we are saying it. So there's a whole approach around that as well with a lot of information around working to points and components around that. But as you can see, the first one is Washington IWRM integration and that's what I'll be talking about today. Now how we work, um, the watershed program is not an infrastructural program. It's all about capacity building, strengthening and empowering and linking governments with civil societies. So we work a lot with um, 
papers, meetings, bringing people together like this webinar, sharing learnings and working together. That's the way that um, we are approaching it. And we're working in a number of countries, Kenya, Uganda, Mali, and Ghana in Africa. Bangladesh and India uh, are in Asia. And also in Netherlands level, doing a lot of advocacy with different organizations and the government themselves, as well as at global level um, at the various meetings and initiatives. We're trying to address a number of challenges which many of you will be familiar with. Um, the difficulty of decentralized service delivery, the proper integration of wash and water resource management, component of evidence-based decision-making, the issue of financing that I already mentioned, reaching everybody, the social inclusion component, and the component of civil societies to make sure that there's capacity with them. And now, without further ado, I'd like to go about this integration of IWRM and WASH. And within this little five minutes that I'm taking for that, I want you to understand two questions at the core of it. One is, where is drinking water under threat due to problematic water resource management? And the second question is, where is problematic WASH, or actually the sanitation, a threat to other water resources? When you keep those two in mind, you'll be able to see where the linkages are at the various levels, be it at community level, at district level, or at state level. All of the work that we are doing, and I think um, everybody online is working in a similar uh, situation, we're working towards the SDGs. Um, as you may be aware, there are six SDGs and the SDG 6. Um, and just to show you where this is based, we're focusing on drinking water under the wash components, together with the sanitation and hygiene of 6.1 and 6.2. But there's a separate sustainable development goal, which is around water management, which is 6.5. So we're working on integrating these three SDGs. However, the moment you start doing that, you will find it is linked with water quality, 6.3. It is linked with equitable use of water, 6.4. It is obviously linked with keeping also the environment a good and healthy. And therefore, basically, you come to all of the different collaborations and participations. So this approach of watershed is based on 6.1, 6.2, with 6.5. But all the other uh, um, targets under SDG 6 are part of it. And a lot of people ask me, what is IWRM about? It's about integrated water resource management. It sounds very complicated, but it's got four basic principles, which are relatively easy to understand. The first one is that fresh water is a finite and vulnerable resource. Basically, there's not enough. Of it. it means that we have to cherish and care for the fresh water that we have. And with all the colleagues of FANSA, I'm sure that is very clear and there shouldn't be a single problem um, in that understanding. The second component is to be able to make it um, water management proper, it should have a participatory approach, which I think we're also quite familiar with, civil society organizations being part of it. The third component is now recognized centrally within um, our sectors, is that women have a central role, but also in decision making and realize that IWM principles were written up in the 80s, 90s, when this belief wasn't there as strong as we are now, but there's still quite a lot of work to improve. And the fourth one is that there is an economic value to water. This doesn't necessarily mean that we recognize um, that everybody has to pay for it, although, um, but we do recognize that water has got a value for IWM irrigation, industry, and of course for the well-being, and that it needs to be recognized in planning your water management. That's very briefly integrated water resource management. And a lot of people, when they talk about IWM, they think about large principles. It's typically at large scale. It's about basin level. It is about catchments. It's about transboundary quite large approaches with typically 
um, big uh, modeling being done about it, uh, a lot of data around it, and also different institutional problems. It could be within um, Riven ba Basin Authority, sometimes the Ministry of Water varies. But in general, people think of it as a quite large principle. Whereas, on the other hand, when we look around WASH, it's something that's much more at a localized level. Um, and WASH 6.1, when we're talking about it's not just about the water from the tap, it is everything around it as well. Different varieties from boreholes, pipes, or rainwater harvesting. But the point is that it's sustainable. The point is that it will, is not just for today, but also for tomorrow and next year and beyond. And linking it with water resource management is to make sure that that is possible. Now, I realize not everybody is coming from the wash sector. So I just want to indicate that sanitation is not just the pit latrine, but it is the whole fecal sludge management, as we call it, which means a whole principle of capturing the fecal matters, containing it, for instance, in your pit latrine or septic tank, and then a principle of removing it either by truck or um, sewerage, and that there's a treatment and safe disposal. So when we look at sanitation, we look at the wider issue and not just at the location of the pit. And same for hygiene. We don't just look at hand washing, but it's a holistic approach, um, including also um, uh, liquids that are there, so water uh, hygiene, and the various components around it, uh, the compounds as well, with fields and compounds. the F diagram is often related. Now, how does this actually link? I can talk a lot about IWRM, I can talk a lot about WASH, and I'm sure we all can talk a lot about it here. Within. However, I just want to highlight this as a diagram. It's a very simplified way of looking at it. But let me take you through it, and then I'll complicate it a little bit more. Let's assume within a district you've got some water flow. This could be the river, but also could have, of course, a groundwater flow. Basically, this is all the water that you have available, all the fresh water. From that, somewhere along the line, you take out the drinking water, basically for your 6.1. And there's something particular about this. This should be the best water available. Um, so as good as possible, uh, if you can. Once that's taken, what you obviously get, you use it and you get sanitation. That sanitation gets pollution, and if you don't look out, it will go back into the flow and pollute the overall water flow. And if you're even more unlucky, it will go back into your drinking water. It's a very schematic way of looking at the WASH IWM integration, and it makes it a little bit more complicated if we look at responsibilities. Um, each of the components is with a different ministry, typically, with a different government. The Ministry of Public Works and Housing will be doing the drinking water. Sanitation is often hosted by the Ministry of Health. And the overall IWM is within the basin. And this can be very complicated for when you are in a community to know where to go and who is responsible. And we'll be sharing some of the experiences of Bangladesh, how this could be working. There is climate change or um, changes in rainfall patterns will mean there's less water. The principle remains the same. If you want to keep and allocate the best water, therefore reducing treatment for drinking water. So coming back on the two components of linking, where is wash or where is drinking water under threat due to problematic water resources? Are there any problems to it? Some people like to talk in SDG, so we're 6.1 under threat due to problematic 6.4 and 6.5. Or if you're in the field, very easily ask, where is your drinking water coming from? Second question that we have to bear in mind is about um, sanitation. Is it a threat to other resources or not? 6.2, a threat to SDG 6.3, 6.5. Or need to understand where the fecal sludge is going to, or as some people say, where your shit is going to. With that, I've given a little bit of background to the project and to IWM WASH. And I'm going to ask our colleague Ranjan from WaterAid Bangladesh 
to go over to his presentation and give some how this actually works on the ground in Bangladesh. Ranjan, can we see yeah. if you can share your screen? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sharing my screen. Is it okay? Yes, it is coming. Give it one more second. Thank you very much. And we, yes, perfect. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you for all uh, who joined this meeting. And good afternoon and good uh, morning, everyone who is joined outside in the South Asia region. Uh, actually, Arian set the tone what is watershed, what is uh, the meaning of wash and IWRing uh, linkage with us. Based on this, I'm going to present now. So this is from Bangladesh experience. I prepared this presentation, uh, taking input from DOT, the local partner involved in Hulna uh, sub district, which is the south coastal uh, area in Bangladesh. Uh, and also the imports uh, come from Oitland International, South Asia. Uh, based on this, we, uh, I have prepared this, and it obvious uh, IRC also uh, provided technical imports, especially Arian also provided uh, technical imports to uh, make it happen at the ground. So what the background is, you know, Bangladesh has achieved enormous progress in case of support supply and sanitation. At least our latest GNP report showing that. But if you consider the safely managed aspect uh, linking with SDG number that is already Arian mentioned 6.1, 6.2, and also the ladder of safely managed sanitation and water, there are multi-dimensional problem. It relates with storage of water, quality of water, and second generation sanitation challenges that Arian lastly finished, that is management of fecal sludge and other oysters. There are a number of issues is here. So uh, it is the background. And also, you know, there are a number of comprehensive policies and standards in case of Bangladesh. If you go to the website of uh, Water Development Board, water resource planning organization, local government division, number of policies and standards they set for uh, the country to go ahead. This, the knowledge about these strategies, standards, is this resulted implementation level is very poor. Uh, problem lies with also the political commitment and also financing and timely fund allocation. There is no specific wash and IWRM budget yet in our national budget. Though nowadays we are trying to push the local government institutions so that they can have their separate budget line in case of wash and IWRM. Uh, in case of IWRM, uh, in case of Bangladesh, it is mainly the policies which we found, it is mainly driven towards support, irrigation, and other uh, disaster management aspect. So this is heavily construction bias. They are not thinking about the provision of safe drinking water and use of water for sanitation facilities, which is actually missing. And huge capacity gap within the institution at local level, even at central level. So this derives us to undertake the issue. Uh, I want to enter with, as you know, in 2013 in Bangladesh, there is the Water Act approved for the first time. It is actually the framework we are referring to introduce and integrate water resource management aspect. This is the law that derives all the institutions in the country and the local government so that they can take initiative to protect, to invest, and sustainable use of rivers, canals, and other water bodies. Even look after the groundwater extraction aspect. This particular act supported us. So 
And not only that, in case of Bangladesh, government of Bangladesh with the support of uh, uh, government of Netherlands, uh, recently uh, developed the Delta plan to inti uh, ensure integrated water resource management aspect. Not only that, our planning commission along with 35 different, uh, different government agencies under 13 ministries directly or indirectly involved for wash and IWRM issues. CSOs and non-government organizations are nowadays talking about uh, water security aspect, uh, IWRM, even the safety management of water aspect. Private sector is coming out. So with this backdrop, watershed program, which is already shared by Arian, given us the uh, scope to look after the integrated water management aspect and at least uh, uh, do something and uh, within doing this, uh, share experience among the sector so that it can be replicated further. So, in case of Bangladesh, the watershed focus is, uh, focus is strengthening capacity of CSO so that they can conduct lobby and advocacy for sustainable water services with focus of IWRM. We want to improve policy implementation and practice and with coordination gap. So it is one of our uh, strategic uh, objective to somehow fill in the gap and also promote intersectoral dialogue. So under watershed in Bangladesh, what we have done, we tried to create awareness is understanding among CSOs and different wash networks, including PANSA, WCC, wash alliance. This type of uh, uh, network is uh, 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 linked with us, and we try to make joint collaboration with them so that we can uh, not only talk about wash aspect, also link wash issue with IWRM aspect. What we have done. Uh, we try to build capacity of CSO for evidence-based lobby advocacy, and definitely it is supported by others, uh, alliance member like uh, IRC is here, Agbo is here, Simavi is here, Wetland International is here. In case of gender and social inclusion aspect, gender uh, and water alliance is uh, al working with us. So one of our uh, intervention area is to increase budget and make it equitable, at least at sub-district level. And uh, using this experience, we can expand and accelerate this in the other city of Bangladesh also. To do that, we targeted duty bearers, including Department of Public Health Engineering, Local Government Engineering Div uh, Division, uh, Bangladesh Water Development Board, and local level LGS, obviously Union Purishat, uh, Upojala, the sub-district authorities and district authorities. And we involve the CSOs to respond to the duty bearer and not only respond uh, to oversee what duty bearer is doing using different tools and come up with voice uh, the, wh what need to be changed. So linking is uh, another uh, area where we are uh, focusing. To do this exercise, uh, we involved stakeholders like Water Resource Ministry, local, uh, Ministry of uh, what, uh, Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives, Water Resource Planning Organization, Bangladesh Water Development Board, Department of Public Health Engineering, and others. Already I mentioned this name, so I'm not repeating. So what uh, already I have mentioned the uh, two uh, implementation, ensure implementation of Water Act that is passed in Bangladesh in 2013, there is a missing, there is no rule. So what we have done, we try to um, um, mobilize organization that is ORPO so that they can finalize the rules, taking inputs from different corners, even with the uh, wash networks and national level, local level CSO jointly provide comments on the draft water rule, what government has uh, circulated and provided uh, uh, scope to uh, comments. 
and this rules is finalized in uh, 2018 and under this rule there are a number of things uh, and uh, issues and uh, possibility to uh, involve the csos in the local level planning process that is union level IWRM committee, Upojara level IWRM committee, district level committee, and there is a national steering committee also to see how it is happening. So after this approval, we focus uh, how we can link using these rules and other principles, uh, the four principles already Aryan mentions of IWRM, how we can implement this at local level. So uh, in Bhola sub-district, we have targeted under watershed and under Bhola, there is one union that is Bheduria. Uh, we piloted this in that particular union. So what we have done in that union to ensure linkage of OASH and IWRM considering the uh, principles, government mandate, policies, regulations. So what we have done, we start with the awareness raising initiative. Already you saw it is in Bangla that is water security plan, the key principles. And we try to other means. Side by side, we prepared a easy going booklet that WASH and IWRM can look into. Uh, we develop capacity of local CSO. In case of capacity, it is, uh, you know, in Bangladesh, uh, uh, IWRM uh, aspect and linking with WASH, it is mostly theoretical. So even when we started, we are a little bit in confusion as Arian is presenting what is the key principle, what is the linkage. Initially, uh, we are not in that position to that way. So, uh, we take support from the uh, organization like IRC, Oitland International. In the picture you are seeing, the this is NAIL and Arian. The NAIL is now the uh, member of parliament in uh, Netherlands government. And he, he has huge experience in case of Bangladesh uh, IWRM aspect. He worked with Water Development Board, uh, LGD. So taking support from this particular expert, we try to mobilize the CSOs at local level and build their capacity through workshop, coaching, and other means. Side by side, Wetland International supported us to carry out number of assessments so that it can be integrated with, we can integrate with water security planning. We do FGD we do casement assessment. Under this situation assessment, we try to find out not only the tea boil and taps, also the water, uh, other water bodies like uh, um, ponds, uh, natural water resources, canals, and this, and try to find out what are the situation and what people are actually uh, using uh, for this. We also, uh, try to find out the existing water and sanitation options people are using and what is their condition and what are the condition of these uh, existing sources. In this uh, uh, picture, you can see uh, like picture A and B. Uh, this is uh, in Vola Shab district under Dhonia Union. We find this, uh, the connection of uh, uh, Latin is directly to the water bodies and sometimes in the uh, other wetlands. So this type of assessment we, we carried out before undertake this action. And also we try to find out the commitments from the duty from Union Purishad, from Upojala Purishad, approved water rules. The interim committee government recommended to look after the overall uh, water management aspect. So we we have opinion opinion sharing and awareness workshop with them uh, at level. Then we come up with action to see and all are uh, looking after at water security aspect. As you know, water. 
thick uh, integrated water management aspect and uh, it links with wash as well so uh, this is the guideline we have prepared uh, we can share the link uh, if anyone is interested and this guideline actually the basis how we can involve others and how it will be implemented at local level uh, alongside we try to uh, find out who are actually the left behind using the inclusive and gender responsive budget monitoring tool because we find budget is not available if there is plan there is mandate and commitment but if there is no budget it will not be happened and who who told we, we try to find out using citizen scorecard and community monitoring that we have come up with some recommendation like number latin is connected to it local water bodies it will not be fair if the water bodies is polluted with the connection of latin so this type of citizen scoring card social mapping is done and using this community and csos local csos of bola come up with uh, uh, um uh, petition submission to the concern authority like water development public uh, engineering who are mandated to ensure this aspect so what happened finally we have able to introduce water security plan union parishad chairman agreed to have it and uh, what Short water security plan that is ultimately ensuring uh, linkage of wash and uh, proper management of uh, water resources at that union level. Uh, mass awareness on protection of wetlands and water bodies. This is one of their plan. And discourage over extraction of ground water and do campaign for this within um, particular area. stopping latrine connection with water excavation of ponds and canals which can be used by the local people so this is uh, one example already union parishad in bhedoria has uh, taken in their plan uh, as part of this they have started uh, uh, excavation of ponds uh, there is two uh, picture uh, in the left side it's showing and also water development board uh, taking consent from and recommendation from local cso uh, prepared dam and also bhola uh, canal excavation going on uh, this is the some example that uh, what local authority started to protect their water bodies also as part of this not only that to reaching the core some issues uh, which we found at local level we tried to connect at national level uh, uh, policy dialogue recently uh, water aid along with policy support branch uh, and also uh, wash networks uh, pansa wcc uh, uh, then bowin they organized national level uh, workshop for finalizing proper strategy for water supply sanitation sector in bangladesh and when determining uh, standard of services we have taken care of the local issues and experiences at the national uh, uh, strategies it is already uh, in a process of finalizing a national forum for the excluded people started receiving uh, good quality water from the uh, psa for this kind of thing and tubewell are also uh, allocated for them at union parishad level not only uh, watershed uh, targeted union it is also accelerated in uh, another union i mentioned here in the 
this experience uh, we try to scale up and replicate in another sub district uh, under lokhipur uh, districts uh, and also another another union of uh, bola sub districts and hopefully it will work so in a nutshell this is the experience and the process and our targets so far uh, we have um, uh, done we have many thing to uh, present here uh, <laughs> but uh, i am <laughs> concluding now i want to thank uh, partho from gor and uh, harsh from oetland uh, for uh, helping me to prepare this and also uh, my line manager uh, abdulal muit uh, he helped me to prepare this hope it you find it useful thank you thank you very much uh, ranjan bhai i think it's been a really good overview of something which is actually very complex um of trying to engage at the different levels um with the different issues that are around thank you very much i'm going to take two or three, a couple of more minutes to highlight some of the examples from india and then we'll go to questions and answers but please if you do have any question use the chat box to already type it so you don't forget it and then we'll come back to you just a couple more minutes to highlight some some things from india one thing that we didn't mention is the journey that we've already been making as a uh, uh, program we started back in 2016 and we've been going through working with a variety of partners at different levels particularly because there's the advocacy component and for instance in india we're working in bihar and odisha um and we're working at state level and at district level with a variety of partners some of them or most of them are also part of the fansa network of course now within india india as you all know is a very massive and complicated and um situation and there are a couple of legislative backgrounds that we need to understand and that's been influencing the way we've been working around this i'm just going to highlight a couple of them because i think most of you are in a much better position to know it but of course the sbm and the jal shakti um approach that's happening now is providing a huge um component basically sbm is all about the sanitation and making sure that not just the pit latrine is there but after that it doesn't become a source of pollution for the water resources and jal shakti is all about water and conservation of it a couple of other things that we've been seeing that are fitting within our approach and this is the legal framework that helps to place our linking of cso's with government it's for instance um the composite water management index that we found where the number of components are related to wash and iwrm there's the guidance for wetlands because one of our partners is wetlands and a lot to be able to conserve and preserve and store water and also the components around the groundwater which has new guidelines um for regulating and controlling groundwater which in the overall discussion about drinking water is very important because most of the drinking water in india comes from groundwater So I just want to highlight also that we are looking at what's going well um and what's not going so well because it's a complicated situation we have anywhere. One of the things that we have succeeded is being able to make the links with CSOs and communities and also that there is at management level uh, support for integrating these components. Um we've made village water security plans which is an example of where you take the concerns of a community organize it in a way and prepare it in such a way that you know where to go within the government system for addressing the concerns and start a collaboration it's a right and responsibilities that we're talking about and um we have been able to um uh, be able to get some funding for um uh, reducing risk of contamination and creating some new water sources in some of the which is part of the lobbying and advocacy and that you want to see but there are lots of difficulties around it one of them is of course that planning has got very many components coming into it and the long term focus that is typically needed for water resource management is not always present um with the partners that we're working with and with the government 
And the difficulty is that there is no silver bullet. So apologies for any of the colleagues who came online thinking this will be a solution for everything. Um, that's not the case. Um, we're sharing experiences as it's going and as we are working along. And I hope that will be of inspiration for yourself as well. We're continuing in India to work a lot with um, uh, the PRIs. We're working with CSOs and um, working on the integration of um, the WASH into the IWRA. Just one moment, I just have to press one button. Yep. Okay. This brings us to two examples I still want to highlight of a practical component where the WASH and IWRM is working in India. One is where we've been working on um, where actually water quality problems are in the communities. And in Tampara Basin, that has led to understanding where the fresh water lens is and therefore being able to think of protection and re, um, um, revigoration by infiltration and uh, retention of this freshwater lens together with the community. And the second one is uh, in uh, Deborah Chow Basin, where there's a complication with mining as well. And there's been a lot of work around um, ensuring that water conservation, water literacy is improving and helping people and government and communities to understand the issues uh, around that. Now, there are a number of components that we've been taking you through, and I'll paste all these links in the uh, chat. Um, there is a very good video that I also would like to indicate for you to watch after this, which is Building Bridges of Water. Um, but with this overview, um, particularly of the example of Bangladesh, I hope to get some sense and idea that uh, you have about what we're doing about washing IWM and how we're going about linking CSOs with government. So I would like to open the floor for any questions and answers and feel free to type it or if you want, unmute yourself and ask a question. So we've got about 10, 15 minutes for that. So over to you. Thank you very much from our side. Ayat, uh, yeah, there is a question typed by Murli already on the screen. You can check it up and then start answering. Uh, the question is, what were the most important new enabling conditions created through the project that worked towards integrating WASH and IWRM? I think it's for Ranjan. Yeah. Uh, can I answer? Go ahead, Ranjan. I'll try to, I'll try to answer. Thanks, uh, uh, This is actually the reality. We are taking number of projects and implementing this and trying to uh, find out what are the new things or new enabling conditions. Actually, watershed is uh, involving the CSOs, building their capacities and understanding so that they can act and they can come up with their issues and talk with their local duty bearers. At national level, what uh, we have seen, uh, the criticism from government side is not only uh, always welcome, but if you go with evidence and this type of uh, uh, piloting data that may attract government and th then they may uh, come to introduce this in another area. So this type of some enabling environment at national level, but it is not so much visible. But in case of local level, we seen we started from two union at Bola and it is already uh, some elements of this already replicated in 13 unions under uh, Bola Shadur Upojala. And in case of Bola, the local CSO coming up, not only was an IWRM aspect, it, it, even they are coming up with other livelihood aspects in case of uh, mobilizing duty bearer, talking to them. So this is showing us the ray that the modality we have followed, it is working. A ground of understanding and based on evidence and data, 
talking with duty bearers. This is somehow created. Though it is in the scale is little, we have many things and many ways to go. We can try it out further. Thank you. Maybe I can add to that component is that one of the things is really knowing that there are guidelines and in the case of Bangladesh they've got the, the water rule which is a legal framework. It basically was a policy but there was very little knowledge about how that would work in practice, how that could be used, implemented, strengthened and I think one of the um, great ways that in Bangladesh has been working is um, we've been able to translate what this means for the Bola district and it's one of the things that also is helping us to scale it up because the legal framework um, is already there. That's why I think if you want to replicate this in other countries, understanding what is the remit of each of the institutions and then seeing which and how a CSO can link up and to whom do they advocate for what. Making that linkages is, I think, one of the key components of um, what Watershed has been doing and still is doing. Back over to anybody else who would like to ask a question. Uh, Ari and I have a question. Go ahead. To to both Ranjan and you, uh, how are the uh, findings from this project uh, taken back to the policy makers? You said the policy had to be translated and then this is how you did it. But how did, did the project attempt to take it back, the findings to the to the, the policy makers? And if so, what was the response and uh, how did it happen? OK, thank you. Um, I can indicate it from um, the global level and some of the other countries where we've been working. Um, and then Ranjan can answer it for Bangladesh. The first component of how this is taking it back, it works two ways. Um, one of the ways is at local level, where also district officials are empowered how to actually work with their um, own legislation and policies. And because we work with a lot of stakeholders, bringing everybody together, um, it helps to influence the actual rollout of it. In some cases, it's also feeding back for new guidance. For instance, in Kenya, um, we are part of a discussion about the new guidance that's happening um, at government level. Um, and in cases, even in the Netherlands, the learnings from all this is feeding back to the Dutch government, how they can implement and how they can strengthen um, their own funding streams, in this case, um, for enabling uh, and supporting similar initiatives. Ranjan, would you like to say something around that? In, in case of Bangladesh, we actually, I already mentioned, we actually started when uh, government is trying to uh, draft the water rule based on 2013 water act we already mentioned and from the very beginning we tried to push government especially the water resource planning and organization that is orpo to make sure that citizens participation is ensured there earlier the local level committees are not proposed only the central level committee through different department it has been done but as per the recommendation from CSO, government has acknowledged this. The technical committee, it's covered with the eminent uh, professor, Ainun Nishad, uh, the um, environmental specialist. They come up and take our agenda, that is what should be a focus, how it can be linked, and how citizens' participation can be ensured and in local level planning. So this helps, finally, government take this and approve this water rule. Taking advantage of this rule, we are again, again trying to make sure it is implemented at ground and showcase it to governments so that in this way it can be ground. OK. I can hear a little bit of background noise at the moment. Um, I'm aware of time and uh, we lost some time in the beginning, but I was going to ask if there's anybody with a similar approach that they would like to still share 
um, within this. For those people that can't stay on, um, please, I've put in the chat two links. One is where you'll be able to see all of the, the PowerPoint presentation and some supporting information, and also a request as we're trying to strengthen some of the sharing within the Fund Time Network. Um, feel free to submit a survey and help us improving on it. Um, is there anybody else who has any question? And I know two colleagues have joined a little bit later. Um, Elian and Harsh, welcome as well. Um, any other questions? Back over to you. Okay. Feel free to reach out at any moment in time to SNEA within the FANSA network or to us um, at IRC or to the colleagues at WaterAid Bangladesh. As you can see, it's a whole consortium of people that are working on this. And um, the recording will be made available as well. And you will be able to get the presentation in the link I just provided. Uh, Arian. Uh, yeah. From Dor Patho and from Wetland Hearts, they can also add something if uh, they want. Probably Parth. they are also here. Over to Parta, who is doing some fantastic work uh, in Bola itself. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Ariel. And uh, this is a really very interesting webinar so far. And uh, the Ranjunda uh, has shared uh, most of the things. And the, and I don't want to lingering uh, this webinar to share other unimportant things. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the IWRM issues have been visualized at the local level uh, mm -hmm. with the CSO, like the government, uh, are responding uh, to the uh, uh, call of the CSOs. Now they have included them in the committees, the government structures committees like the standing committees and the IWM committees, which is, I think, it's a, uh, uh, it's a part of sustainability as, as long we are not to we'll be there. Uh, but these committees as the government uh, uh, structured, they will uh, remain and the people will uh, join in these meetings and share their needs. And I hope this will sustain and uh, and I have also answered in the chat box uh, 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 on the questions of the Snehalata. I think uh, she can uh, explore, uh, explore more in details uh, with the website and other. Thanks. Thank you, Bharta. Okay. I realize I've been seeing some people come up just in the last couple of minutes. I think we've had a little bit of confusion on timing and time zones uh, between Bangladesh, India, Netherlands, UK. Um, so there's some learning on that. But thank you all for um, being present and available. Um, Sneha, would you like to close um, considering time? Uh, Aryan, yes, I think we have already gone uh, six minutes beyond our scheduled time. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for everyone for your presentation. Thank you, Aryan, for taking this initiative and uh, Ranjan, Partha, and everyone from the watershed team uh, from both uh, Bangladesh, India. I would like to I would like to congratulate for your good work and thanks for partnering with Fansa on this webinar to present the findings. And I thank all the participants who are part of this webinar. And I would like to inform we will have uh, more continuous such webinars in future, not only to share our our, uh, our um, findings from the research, but also to generate some useful discussions uh, and um, and develop the CSO statements and things like that in future. So for this year, uh, this is the last, but I think from the January onwards, we are going to have series of workshops, uh, a series of webinars uh, uh, in here. So I request all the members to extend their support and, um, and their and uh, uh, keep continuing your participation in the same way. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Aryan, for all that you organized.
Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Thank 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 you.